Let's take a look at making a simple request with Java. This video assumes that you have a basic familiarity with Java and Maven. The Java client library expects to find a configuration file called adds.properties in your home directory. Navigate to this file in the GitHub project to see a sample. You can click on the raw button and then save the file to your home directory to use as a template. Let's open it up in the text editor. First, enter an application name. This is a string that is sent to Google with every request and should identify your application. Next, enter your network code. Finally, enter the path to the service account file that you downloaded in the previous video and save the file. Now we're ready to look at some Java code. Open up your development environment and create a new Maven project. In this example, I'm using the free IntelliJ Community IDE. Let's give our project a group ID and call the jar DFP Hello World. Now we'll add the required dependencies to the pom.xml file. First, add the common artifact called adds-lib. It's in the group com.google.api-adds. Be sure to pin the version by entering the most recent release number from GitHub. Next, add the DFP-specific artifact called DFP Access. It's in the same group as the previous dependency. Again, we'll pin the version and use the same version number that we used previously. We're done setting up dependencies, so let's create a new class in our package. We'll call the class DFP Hello World, just like our jar. First, add a main method so that we can directly execute this class. While it's not a best practice, we'll make this throw the generic exception type. Now that we're in the main method, we need to retrieve a credential object. We'll use the offline credentials builder to do this. Notice that the offline credentials symbol is red. I'll use IntelliJ to automatically import it at the beginning of the file. Then we'll use the for API method to specify DFP as the API. Next, we'll use the from file method to use the adds.properties file that we created in our home directory. Finally, we'll call build and then generate credentials to retrieve the credentials. Next, create a DFP session instance with the DFP session builder. We'll call from file again in order to get the network code and application name from the adds.properties file. Then, we use with OAuth2 credential to import the credentials from the previous step. Finally, we'll call build to generate the session. Now we'll create a new DFP services object. These three things are all we need to access any service with the DFP API. Now let's get a reference to the service that we actually want to use. In this case, network service. Notice that the version of the API that you would like to use is specified by the import path of the service interface. Let's select the latest version. We'll use the get method of the services object to retrieve the instance, passing it the session object and the class type of the service we're interested in. Now we're ready to make a call to the DFP API. Let's write the next line of code and then take a look at what it means. The get current network method on the network service interface is what actually makes the call to DFP. You can see that it returns an instance of the type network. This is a good API call to get started with, just as a sanity check to make sure you're on the right network. Now we'll simply print out some information about the network that we've retrieved. All DFP entity types have getters and setters that correspond to the attributes in the documentation. Let's build and run this class and see what happens. You can see we've gotten out the network code and display name of our current network. You can find code similar to what we've written here in our GitHub repo in the examples folder in a file called getCurrentNetwork.java.